These are the top 100 Minecraft speedrunners. You'll see me down in the corner there. I think this is my third or fourth time playing in this competition. Basically, all of us are competing for four slots, so the competition is pretty fierce. There's a lot of good people here as we watch them all load in, and the match is already started. We have a village seed starting out, and I'd probably say this is like one of my weaker points in previous seasons, but I feel going into this competition, well, spare from like not having played Minecraft for like two weeks, a, a couple days before this, I'm I'm feeling pretty good. I think I'm up to date on pretty much all the tech. My mechanics feel really good. I was pretty nervous, like, uh, I mean, not pretty nervous. I was a little bit nervous right before it started, but as soon as it starts, the nerves kind of go away. And so there's there's actually quite a few matches. I think in total, you can have up to 10 matches. Like if you make uh, t it to 10 matches, that means you've qualified and you're one of the top four people. I think the furthest I've ever made it is like three or four matches. So my goal is like, okay, I'm shooting for, for five matches. I get matches, I guess seeds. Tech, tech, pretty much the same thing. Five Minecraft worlds. So I'll be going through probably some of these matches pretty fast because uh, there's like a lot of footage. I was in this tournament for like over an hour. So I'm ahead of like most of the competition by this point. You'll see in the bottom left, uh, there's like a gray advancement that shows up for the first person to get that achievement So Draconix was the first person into the Bastion and I was only a couple seconds behind that I realized this at this point and I'm it gives, it gives me a bit of confidence because I'm like hey I'm like I'm like one of the top people right now There's a there's a there's a chance I could I could play well and this whole competition is being streamed on the Feinberg Twitch channel and Later in this video I get on like the main screen which is the first time that's happened So that was kind of cool they show like four or five people like who, usually who's like uh, in the lead on the seed and they'll, they'll just commentate about the run. I got a lot of screen time this time, which I don't think really has happened before. So that's kind of cool. I think that's a sign I've been playing better, which I, I honestly didn't think I was going to do nearly this well just because I was like uh, in Japan for a couple of weeks. But you know what? We did well. I'm pretty happy with this. If you're a speedrunner, you've also probably been watching this uh, Bastion round and been like, what the heck? I've never seen this before. I kind of like I, I just kind of freestyled this route. I saw that there was a whole bunch of really level and flat terrain and the piglins were kind of everywhere. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to kind of do my own thing and it works out pretty well. I'm just sorting my inventory here and I'm already pearl hanging out of here under five minutes once I got all my trades which happens pretty quickly I have <laughs> I have way too many fire resistance potions but I've been getting better at like uh, sorting my inventory and checking out crap I, I like genuinely I feel like over the past week which has felt pretty good I see the fort and I decide to pearl on this lower terrain here because I, I don't think uh, the good part of the fortress is to the right, and so I decided to play left. It totally works out here. I already sued the two spawners, and I get the achievement, a terrible fortress bottom left. I was the first person to get that achievement, baby, and I realized that mid-match. I try not to focus on it too much because like, I want to be focusing on the game, but I'm like, dude, I'm the first person in the fortress. As we've seen the bottom right, Parker heading the fort as well. Kennen heading to the fort as well. Very close on a lot of these runners. And I think Draconix is gonna probably have the lead leaving the fort, but it's always so unclear. You know, it said in chat that Parker in the, in the bottom right here was the first player to blind, but he's only got two rots measuring his eyes here. And Draconix has six. Now he's not measuring his eyes, but he's killed the blazes for six rods, so he can measure his eyes right here and then just leave. Parker has to measure his eyes and still get Four more rounds. I mean, I'm, I'm hyped to see two, you know, HPG people doing great here, though. Parker's been trying the, the, the qualifiers for, I think, three seasons now. Uh, so this could be his chance to finally make it to the, uh, to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, every season you keep improving, you know, keep focusing on parts of your game to, to play better. And eventually, you know, you might crack it. But it looks like Parker is out. Same time Draconic says, has his extra rods to head to Chords. So after a bit of screen time on the mainstream, that was kind of cool. Uh, I'm off to Chords. Now there's like three, four of us, I think on the mainstream, all going to Chords. I think I get there the slowest, so I can definitely work on where I'm purling to and navigating the terrain. But eventually I get there, I'm in the stronghold. So I find the portal room. I think I go at one wrong direction, but other than that, it's pretty smooth sailing. I have enough for a zero cycle, but as you'll see, I enter the end tier and it's like a back dragon. It's a pretty hard zero. And since it's the first match, I know I'm ahead. Nobody's completed the seed yet. I'm like, you know what? I'll just wait for a perch here. 
Um, I'll play it safe to try to get some points on the board because I could just easily die if I go for the zero. In retrospect, I should be playing to win and I should be sending things. But in my head, I'm like, you know what? I'll craft a bow here, do a little bit of search crafting, but I'm out of arrows. And I'm like, oh, frick. That's a little bit unfortunate. It's just, uh, it's just up to the dragon if it perches now. It could perch right now. And I think that would make me one of the first couple of people to finish the matches. Uh, that would be really lucky though. I actually, th I think it's perching there, but it's not. I got trolled by the dragon. So now it's just a waiting game, kind of praying that nobody else finishes while this is going on. Draconix just finished, you can see in the bottom left, he's another member of HPG, a sub 10. We got our second completion now. I'm still, I'm feeling good though. You know, I know I'm in a really good position. I've seen the dragon a perch. Three people have kind of finished now. And I'm like, not a worry in my mind. But I'll speed up the footage here and you kind of see like, uh, Time, time starts passing, people are finishing, on the bottom left, like, kind, kind of a lot. The round finishes, I get no perch and no points. So I'm sitting there like, dang, I feel like I got a little trolled by the dragon. Which, I think I got a little trolled, but looking back at the footage, like, it wasn't that crazy unlucky to not get a perch there. But it just kind of hurts, because I was in the end and I get zero points. So while I don't have points on the next seed, I am on the big screen, which is kind of cool to see. Hold up, there's the buried treasure. Nicely found from Parker. No TNT, but enough iron. Diamonds for a diamond sword and a shears craft. That's some amazing kelp, but it looks like two good ravines for Parker. And that's, um, it yeah. looks whack. I, I don't know. See the, the stone there? I, he's going to commit to it, but I'm not, I'm not loving he this. Sold on this, yeah. I'm not loving this. Now I see some ravines over this way, and I know in my heart that this isn't a good ravine, and the odds that it's real are not very high. But I'm like, you know what? I got, I gotta, I gotta have some room for separation. I need to get ahead of the other people, and it, it just, it just isn't real. And so I lose time. But I'm entering the Nether in another net Magra ravine not too far away, so we're not too far. Away. Entering the nether, it's a very fast bash, and they pick pretty good seeds for this tournament. So not a whole lot to say here, but when I get to the fort, it's actually just tragedy. It takes me so long to find the spawner, and I know I'm already a little bit behind. This definitely isn't helping. But things get even worse when I build my portal and I'm in a cave. Now this shouldn't normally happen in like a ranked thing. I'm pretty sure there's like a, a thing if you build your portal like on the blaze spawner, you shouldn't get caved. So it's pretty unusual. The unfortunate thing here is it's, it's like on top of a witch hut. And so I see a witch, I'm on two hearts. I'm like, I think I would die if it threw a potion of instant damage. So I'm just gonna run. It makes me go like pretty far out of the way to measure my eyes. And then I have to bit, dig back down. So I'm wasting like maybe a minute in total, which is not what you want for this tournament. So we're entering the stronghold still at 940. So like a pretty solid speed run, but it's really just not fast enough for what I need. So then we're on to the zero with about half the slots remaining. I do a pretty clean job, but it's just not fast enough. And that's the end of the seed. Down was pretty crazy. Even for a playoffs, like the slowest time was 1040, bro, 1040. Half the completions happened within a minute and a half. So I'm thinking to myself, oh dang, maybe if I didn't get put next to that witch hut, I would do better, but lots of the other people probably spawn there. And that's just what it is. I do feel pretty good mentally regardless though. Like I'm not getting down on myself. I'm not like getting, what would the equivalent of road rage be in this? I'm not crashing out. I kind of like that verb, adjective, verb. Verb. But uh, the notable thing about this seed is I spend about a minute extra getting food and people have already entered the nether. In fact, they've entered the bastion while I'm building my port. So I thought it was a good play here because food is just like overpowered, but a minute is a minute and I'm behind by quite a bit. And it's just a standard treasure bastion route with a diamond pick though. Actually, so I guess it's not standard. We You get a diamond pick, everything just feels so fast when you have a diamond pick. That, that's pretty much all I have to say about the bastion route. It just, it just feels good. I just wanted to say So that. we're off to the fortress. I don't think we're terribly behind. It's only 5.30. I think people have been in the fortress maybe a minute. I, get, I guess we are kind of far behind. I, we're still probably a minute behind uh, the first place and I get to pull off uh, a mega donut. I think that's the, I think that's what they call it when you do four TNT like this. 
Maybe it's just a regular TNT donut. I think it's a TNT donut. The mega donut is something slightly different. But I did a TNT donut in this speedrun, so that's kind of cool. You also see I have a ridiculous amount of food. Three steak, a notch apple, and two golden apples. Like, the play was definitely not to get food on this run because, like, I, st I still had the two golden apples and notch apple when I, when I finished the run. But even with all of that, I'm in the end. Only 14 people have finished, and I'm hitting my zero. Zero is successful, and I get my first couple of points. I think it's technically like one or two points because I'm like the 23rd person to finish. But you know what? For wasting a minute getting food, like, I, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with this. It's a desert temple seed and people are finishing in under 11 minutes. Kind of ridiculous. I'm gonna really breeze over this next seed because I don't think it's very interesting. Aside from the fact that I made a diamond ax, that was kind of cool. It's a 10 minute end enter and I've honestly, I put myself in a pretty good position to get points. You'll see two people, only two people have finished and I'm going for the zero. So I set it up, I place down the obsidian in the wrong spot. And so I need to go try to fix it and take some fall damage. And I'm like, okay, I need some food. I blow up my bed prematurely. Maybe I could have salvaged it. But at this point, I need to bail out and the dragon kills me. So that was that one. No points for me again. Now with this last seed, I'm gonna do a more normal commentary. I actually haven't watched this run back in, in like a week. This happened like a week ago. I started editing it and then I kind of just haven't edited it. So we're gonna kind of see how this goes. I don't remember the seed. As super well, I do remember that it was a ruined portal, which I guess doesn't mean much because you can kind of just see that it's a ruined portal here. But I decided to get the gold block first. This is really important because it allows me to get a golden ax, which means I can not only chop wood faster, but it also gives me the leeway to get more wood so that I have blocks when I get into the nether. Loading into the nether, it's only about a minute, so I'm feeling a lot better than the other seed. That kind of scarred me when I spent a minute getting food on that desert temple seed. And then everybody just finished the seed in 10 minutes and 40 seconds, and I could have gotten so many more points. I almost die right there. Let me just let me just point that out. <laughs> I remember about having a heart attack there, because I knew that this seed, like it's, it's, it's make or break here at this point. I'm going to leave the tournament unless I finish like top five places on this next seed. Like there's just no other way for me to survive in the tournament. And so I was like, well, if I'd fallen down that ravine, that is just GG's, which actually, wouldn't have been GG's in this situation. Oh, look at that, I got a ghost pick. Um, because the latter half of the seed, it just, I don't know, it just goes very interesting, let's say. So we're in a treasure, did I say treasure? We're just clearly not in a treasure. We're in a bridge bastion right now. And the, the notable thing that I wanted to say about this is right before this tournament, I was practicing quite a bit because I wanted to make sure I remembered, oh yeah, I shouldn't be waiting here for trades. I just need to point that out. But I was practicing before the, the tournament because I'd been in Japan for like a week and I was practicing the things that I was most prone to forget, if that makes sense. I wasn't practicing like mechanics or like the things that'll happen most commonly in speedruns. I wanted to practice the stuff that I feel like I'd forget, like maybe lava housing or this route that I'm doing right now. You've probably never seen me do this route before. I don't know how much you guys like remember when you watch these speedruns. Like I do a lot of the same routes cause it's just like speedrunning and you do them a lot. So I'm not sure if you guys are watching this and like, oh, I've never seen him do this before. Or if you're just watching this like, bro, I just watch you like go into a black box and like, I don't think too much about it. I'm not sure which one of those it is. But the point is, this Bastion route is something that I pretty much hardly ever do. But I practiced it 10 minutes before this tournament. And I was like, I was, I was so excited at this point. I'm like, I was like, oh my gosh, I practiced this and I needed to practice it because I kind of forgot it low key. But I practiced this and I was feeling so good about myself. I was like, oh my gosh, I like, I actually clutched up here. I practiced something that I needed in the tournament. Um, only for after the run for me to watch the commentators and they're like, yeah, you could have just like done the Donkey Kong route. And I was like, oh, duh. Like I normally do Donkey Kong route in these situations. Why did I not do Donkey Kong route here? And I think it's debatably maybe better or worse. I actually, I like, I haven't done any testing, but I think in most situations, the Donkey Kong route here would make a lot of sense. I, I feel like the conversation still makes sense, even if I'm talking about Donkey Kong route. Like, very few people watching, I imagine, are like, oh yeah, when he says Donkey Kong route, that's like when he bridges right here, gathers the pigs from over here and here. 
It's just very interesting. I'm getting all self-conscious about my commentating now. Like, what's going on here? So I finish up the Bastion, I eat my golden apple as I'm leaving, and I think, actually I'm not sure how many of the other runners took this upper terrain, but taking the upper terrain here was definitely the play. There's just this massive wall in the direction I needed to go for the fortress. I decided to go up here, and I know that it's paying off. I think I'm seeing in chat, like, I'm pretty close to, like, ahead of the, the competition. I've eaten my golden apple, so I get fire resistance from that, and a whole bunch of saturation hearts, so I'm feeling really good. I don't have any more food, which could be a problem. I'm not sure if I grab food in the overworld, but I'm just, like, trying to stay calm here, crafting up all my things. I've really been trying to pay more attention to, like, clearing my inventory, like a clean inventory in a speedrun. So underrated. I don't get a clean portal build off here, but that's fine. That's just like a mechanical thing. And I'm running out of things to say. I almost leave the nether on four rods, but I get one last final stretch of uh, blazes to spawn and I get six rods. It's like, in the, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little bit torn on like blinding early because like you get to measure where the stronghold is. The only bad thing about blinding without all of your blaze rods is you could be like, 40 blocks away from the stronghold and then like it's just a total time loss to go back into the nether to get the other rods because like you just walk there in the overworld i hope that makes sense if it didn't just i'm just i'm just yapping speedrun stuff just really trying to like figure out what i could have done better and differently on this seed i think in in this uh seed i play it pretty well i don't know how pulsar is already in the stronghold i guess he's just like doing mechanically things better but i decided to get food here which maybe is a pitfall, but like, I don't know. Just like, ugh, having food in a speedrun is just so useful. Especially for consistency and just like not dying, which is like the number one priority. So we're in the stronghold at like 9, 920, 930. And this is the point where like, I'm in the portal animation. I get a split second to kind of pay attention to where I am and what's going on. I'm like, okay, nobody, I don't think, has entered the end yet. I could be the first person to enter the end, and if I had a quick zero, that's just a free first place for me. Like, there's just so much potential here on this run to, to, to make up ground and stay in the tournament, because like, I'm going to be out if I don't get like top five or something. I don't know exactly how many points it is, but I know that it's kind of a lot, so I'm like, okay. I really, if there's any stronghold that I need a good nav in, it's this one, please. So I'm like re-zooming on my, my eye macro to see if I can get a good spike. There's like a silverfish following me. I'm like, what the heck's going on? There's clearly nothing there, but, 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 you see that ad advancement on the bottom left? Somebody found diamonds. Somebody did not find the end portal yet. I'm not the only one having trouble with this stronghold map. Because it turns out this stronghold is actually just horrendous. I think the fastest person to go through it, it took them like two minutes or something. And there's like, oh wait, Mr. Budgie entered the end. Okay, maybe it wasn't as drastic as I thought. But for the most part, like so many people had troubles like finding the stronghold. Like for me, two minutes later, I'm only now finding the portal room. Like I think if I had found the, the shoulda, woulda, coulda, you know? But like, um, just to point out on this seed, like if I woulda instantly found it, I would've had a shot at finishing first on this seed. To really put this in context, all of the other worlds, I think our slowest time has been like 11 minutes or something. It's 13 minutes right now. Only four people have even finished the seed. If I recall correctly, there's like a 15 minute, like uh, just raw timer for everybody to finish the seed. Like if it goes above 15 minutes, we're not gonna wait for you. Even if like we haven't gotten all of our qualified like finishes yet, it's just like 15 minutes is too long for like this competition. Like you should be beating it faster than that. We got to the 15 minute mark and like it just ended because of the timer rather than people finishing. That was just like how uh, strange the seed was. And that means there was even more potential for me to make up places here and potentially stay in the tournament. But if you look in the, the bottom left, nine people have finished, 10 people have finished, 11, oh, 11 people have finished, that's rough. 12, oh yes, yikes, that's rough. But I think we secure 13 places. I was really happy about it, I was super stoked. I finally got some decent points on the board because 13th place isn't like 23rd, which is what I had been getting. Um, bottom 50%. If people are eliminated now, so 
I'm not sure exactly what the point cutoff is, I think I'm but out. It, it's a miracle if I'm still in. Uh, slash rank. Wait, what is it? Show user fifteen. I'm thirty seventh. So I'm number thirty seventh. So if you have thirty points or more, I have twenty seven points. No, fifteen points. Sorry. Yeah, not even close. Dang, bro. Oh, Dang. that's so. Oh. I don't know how to feel. I'll pull up chat for a second. I'll pull up the YouTube chat too. We're out, guys. We're out.